Last week, Disney told us about a bunch of summer offerings that are coming to Walt Disney World. We'll talk about those. Also, one of our favorite things to talk about, bad guests in the park. All that and more tonight on Park Center. Welcome to Park Center for March 24th, 2024. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside. Thank you guys so, so much for always being with us. We appreciate it. We got lots of live shows for you. Uh, while news tonight's on hiatus, you can come hang out with us, except for next Sunday because it's Easter. Uh, we've got a great, uh, great crew put together for you tonight, starting with Allison. Happy Sunday, everyone. And Stephanie. Hoppy, almost Easter. You said hoppy. That's funny. Uh, and <laughs> Shannon. What's going on, Shannon? Hello. Happy spring, everybody. Happy spring, indeed. Thank you guys for being on tonight. Um, we're going to talk about spring, but we're really going to talk about summer. Disney rolled out a bunch of things that we've been wanting to hear about uh, with some kind of their summer offerings, including uh, Communicore Hall. You guys remember Communicore Hall. If you, if you didn't remember, it looks a little bit like this, or at least it will on June 10th, we hope. Uh, that's going to be coming to uh, to Epcot. The opening is June 10th, which seems like it has been a long time coming. Uh, there's also going to be a, a little Encanto show that's happening during uh, during the opening, which I have so many questions about. But hopefully you guys have taken a look at this. Uh, this is the last piece of, of Epcot from what is actually still going to be opening up. So, um, uh, Stephanie, let me go to you on this one first. Are you excited about what you're seeing here with uh, Communicore Hall or Encanto, or are you just like, just get this stuff open? <laughs> just get this stuff open. Yeah. I, I feel like it's nice that they're trying to be cohesive. I like the um, idea of the theming there to match it to the panels on Spaceship Earth. Um, but I kind of feel like it takes away from it a little bit, its uniqueness. I think I've said that before. And, I, and you've talked about the reflectiveness of the panels, Rob. I'm not sure how that's going to make that center portion a little bit too warm for people. Um, but I do like the idea of there being optional stage shows and Encanto is great. I think it's a very needed show. I think it's really cool that they're going to do a sing-along. Um, but yeah, I feel like that, you know, Epcot will always be becoming. <laughs> I don't think it's going to ever be done. And probably uh, that's a good thing. I mean, I get taking one thing down and opening up another or making things more futuristic or whatever, but it has been becoming for way too long at this point, I feel like. Right. Um, so I'm excited for it finally to be open. Allison, have you taken a look at this? Yeah, sure. Uh, Epcot, Epcot has became. It's like it's not Epcot really anymore, but I'm happy. I've said this before. I am more happy for what's like not going to be there than for what will be there. Like I just want like construction walls down and like full like movement freely and not to like look at, at anything that is a construction zone because it has been half a decade of a construction zone, which is a really, really long time. Um, but the surprise in Kanto show, you know, I don't I don't know why it's that. I kind of would wish it was like like space, like people again, <laughs> like some of those, like bring it back to some of those 80s dancing or like put the jammers out there. I don't know. But uh, but I feel like they just must have been like, everyone has been watching this Encanto live at the Hollywood Bowl uh, musical uh, with all of their children. And it would be great to have something as a break in between the two things. So let's like throw that together. And sometimes at Disney, the very quickly thrown together temporary shows end up sticking around for a long, long time and being very, very good, like Legend of the Lion, um, Lion King. So um, sure, let's see. But on the other side of that, uh, Jungle Book Alive with Magic. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things about this is, uh, is that when Communicore Hall opens up, it's supposed to be an exhibition hall for, we feel like festivals, like there's supposed to be a, like a place in the back for performances and that there are going to be showcases and things, things that we were already seeing in the original Communicore. But this Encanto show shows a whole bunch of kids sitting on the carpet 
and I'm looking at this going, this looks su super temporary, but also like you couldn't have put some benches in there. I mean, it's like they're <laughs> they're going to us, uh, Shannon. They're going. They're already saying to us, get ready for uh, Disney Junior Live. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, you know what. You learn something new every day. And honestly, I thought this portion was outside. Wasn't there a concept art where there would be like a, a stage outside for live entertainment, especially during the festival? So that's what I thought this was. And I was like, it sounds fun. Like I will dance along, but am I just going to be there like a sweaty ball of mess? We're all just going to be hot and cranky, but I mean, fine. But now, okay, it's going to be inside. We're going to get the carpet. All right. Yikes. Oh, Rob. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I think it looks like it's inside. That's my yeah, guess. It does, now that I looked closer at that concept art, it does. But you're right. It's just an empty space, right? But again, when this opens up, it is during a time when there isn't a festival. What's going to be an in-between time between when Flower and Garden ends and Food and Wine begins. And if this is actually supposed to be the festival center that we thought it was going to be before they made all the changes, then there may not be anything in here. And it says this show for Encanto runs through September 6th. Is that... Is that already telling us that maybe when we get the start of food and wine this year and it's not going to start as early as before? Like, this could just be a temporary filler, I guess. So, I don't know. Uh, if you're just going to throw in something temporary, go ahead and throw in Rogers a musical. That's what I say. But let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's let's move on to uh, this Epcot special. So this came out, and we're going to talk about this on Deep in the Plus probably. I know Desi raised a hand on this one when it came out. Um, I saw it. I love this kind of stuff. I love when there is some kind of a TV special um, about Disney, like a behind the scenes or whatever. This is National Geographic. Um, Epcot becoming we kind of kind of riffed off of that early on but when I look at this Allison the first thing I wonder is are they going to talk about harmonious are they going to talk about <laughs> Mary Poppins that didn't happen are they going to talk about wow. any of that stuff that we didn't end up seeing happen or will it be a lot of spin well uh, I think we'll see harmonious because they film these things like so far in advance um, which is why you like when you watch the uh, the last episode of the behind the attraction it's nighttime shows and it ends with like how great harmonious is which is like absolutely hilarious so there might be a little bit of that or maybe there'll be like a little bit of like we did this huge thing and now we also already have another new thing I, I don't know how they're gonna handle it but I think like I too love these kinds of specials. I like really miss when there would be regular ones on Travel Channel. I used to love that, like the DVD, like yes. uh, Walt Disney World Explorer. I spent hours on that. It's basically yes. commercial, but I the vacation planning VHS and DVDs. Like I love that stuff. So I will watch this and bring it up. But I do think this is an absolutely necessary PR step because I think the general public has been told skip Epcot for the last five years. And so they have to get something out there to be like, no, no, you can come now. Like we've cleaned up our pixie dust. <laughs> We're, we're just all nerds, aren't we? Yeah, we're, I mean, like all of us, just like I love the Disney Christmas parade. There used to be a Disney Easter parade, and I, I didn't necessarily want it for the parade. I wanted it for them, for all the things they wanted to sell me. Like, oh, and don't forget, Mulan's coming to theaters, and don't forget, you're going to have a chance to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure, and don't forget. And I'm like, I'm writing it down. I'm not forgetting any of it because it's exciting. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely for that. Shannon, are you in a mood where you can – do a little dance tonight. I mean, we got to thank you. Thank you. See, you know what? You coined that and, and we love it. Uh, we have a jungle cruiser has a super chat for us, had the most emotional moment at Disneyland. A family asked me to take their photo at the castle. Their young son says, mommy has a baby in her belly. The parents just told him what magic. Oh, no, I'm, 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 a, I'm a little verklempt about that one. That's awesome. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and for the super chat jungle cruiser, we appreciate you. Uh, I love th those Disney moments. That's that's fantastic. Um, all right, so let's get back to this uh, this Epcot special again. I, I love the parades and stuff like that. Uh, Shannon, are you, uh, you, you you're gonna you ready to watch this on Disney Plus? Oh, I'm on board with you all about those nostalgic specials and even some of the more recent ones. But what could this be about? Epcot becoming what? <laughs> Becoming an empty space? Like, honestly, like, truly. I'm not doing that to, to just be a, be a jerk about it. But, like, what is there that's very different? There's not a whole lot. So besides Guardians, like, I love Guardians. You know I'm a Guardian fan. But Moana Journey of Water? 
Empty space. Wow. Wow. Oh. Epcot, we don't know this. Epcot oh, becoming an empty space. Uh, I'm going to throw this one to you, Stephanie, because I think basically, though, what we're seeing this with this is it's going to be all the stuff they've done, almost like a pat on the back for, you know, a job well done, a recap, yes. if you will, about that. Do you agree with that, Stephanie? I do. I agree with both of these ladies. I think Allison hit the nail on the head when she said they need good PR. That's really what they need <laughs> because there have been so many people just up in arms about Walcott and that that's, you know, went viral mm -hmm. and hit the internet. So I definitely think they need good PR. It's probably going to be about what Walt's vision originally was for it and how they've transformed it into something different. And I don't know if that will read as a good thing or read as a bad thing, ultimately. Um, uh, one more thing about the Communicore Hall. I feel like there's a lot of flex space there and you know back in the odyssey what they used to do pre-pandemic is cooking demonstrations and i and they would bring in famous chefs during food yeah. and wine and and i hope that this is what they're planning to do for this space and not just do like you know a standard meet and greet that's great i'm all for that for the characters being indoors i don't like to stand out line you know outside in a hot sweaty line so that's fine um but yes i i, I hope that they have more space that they can bring in more people and get more um attention to if they're quoting it as festival, you know. Well, again, I, I mean, I'm just saying that because that's what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a multi-level festival center because there was a period of time where they would shove that stuff into Communicore. There was a period of time once Communicore was down or empty that they would shove that stuff into the uh, Wonders of Life building, which everything we've heard says what happened that to that's... That? Oh, Nothing. we just sweep that right under the rug. They put up some bushes in front of it and a curb, yep. and they're like, nothing <laughs> to see here. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's one of the things when we're going back to the Horizons. I mean, not Horizons. Uh, uh, man, if you think this is cool, you should have seen Horizons. But when we go back to this special <laughs> and we're talking about the things of Epcot becoming, there was that Epcot experience that they had in the Odyssey, which I loved. Yes. Uh, and you sat there and you were surrounded and it's like you really got pumped up. It was right after D23 and they announced all the stuff that was going to be happening. And they're like, here's what Spaceship Earth is going to be like. And it's going to tell the story of, you know, of, of magic and wonder. And then there here's this Moana Journey of Water and the Mary Poppins Cherry Tree Lane is coming. And don't forget, we've got this play pavilion with all these cool things in it. And so much of that didn't happen. So it will be interesting to me since this is National Geographic and not Disney, I wonder if they'll actually talk about any of that kind of stuff. And like, you know, do we have license to say about the things that didn't happen? And maybe they blame COVID, I don't know. But um, I will be anxious to see it when it comes out on April 29th. So, uh, you know, and then we'll talk about it on Deep in the Plus. It'll be fun. Um, so let's talk a little bit about these cabins because God knows we haven't enough. But the cabins uh, that are coming to, um, to Fort Wilderness, they are already dismantling the cabins that are there as of july 1st you're going to be able to uh it says hopefully by july 1st you'll be able to go in and book these uh and have these so the bookings are open now but they're supposed to be open by july 1st here's some folks uh, removing some i guess to go sell them on facebook but the one thing that we saw this <laughs> week was uh, a video walkthrough of the fort wilderness cabins and and i've got to be honest and allison i'll throw it to you because i know we had talked about that you had stayed there um when I'm looking through this, I'm like, ah, this feels like an upgrade to me. I know that the bathroom seems to be on the wrong side to me, but like this looks like these pictures look really good to me. Like I, I'm not hating this. Are you hating this? It, you know, it, it's not a cabin in the wood anymore. It's a condo in the wood and that's fine. <laughs> like I, I'm not like necessarily mad at that. That's like that for me, that's very good, but I am not Fort Wilderness's target audience. And that's why like, I feel bad because like, it doesn't have the same kind of like rustic feel. They still have like the Southwest style more than like, you know, uh, like a, like a camping in the wood style. But no, it looks more comfortable. It looks, uh, they needed, like they absolutely needed an upgrade. Like things were run down. I, um, this is, this is too much information, but my daughter made me sleep on the bottom bunk and she slept on the top bunk and the bottom bunk <laughs> mattress was like concave. And like by, by the end of our trip, my back was destroyed <laughs> because you're walking all day in the parks, carrying an extra like 40 pounds on you because she's always, I don't use a stroller and she makes me carry her half the time. And then I get, get to like take a load off at night in that like horrible mattress, which I'm glad is gone. And so it's, it's like more my taste than I think it is like 
more of the families that visit there. Uh, I don't like the place I'm in bathroom. It was in the middle before, and now if somebody's sleeping in the in the living room, you have to like walk oh, past yeah. that bed to get to the other mm -hmm. side of the cabin, and you're gonna wake people up. Um, but it, it does, it feels spacious. It feels, um, airy. I think it's going to be really nice. Let a lot of light in because of the, like the sliding glass doors, which like they were a little bit darker before and you'll be able to see the pretty, um, the pretty outdoor trees and forest and stuff. So you'll have that, but the inside of the cabin will just feel like it could be a condo in LA. The chat is not yes. the the chat is not happy. Uh, I'm looking through this. I'm looking through this, and uh, Ronald says theming sucks. Uh, Fire Chief sixty six condo in a box. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the chat is yes. <laughs> well, but uh, and and you know Stephanie, I'll, I'm gonna throw I it to you like, next. But um, good. The the I at the uh, by the bunk beds they like what they have is like a mural there that is really nice if they if the whole thing was kind of like that i would be all on board sorry hmm. no yeah i mean again yeah. i i i like the way that 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 looks inside but let's you know again take a look at the outside that this was the one i mean this is fort wilderness oh. this is what we know as fort <laughs> wilderness like and then this is the new one which uh I don't know. It looks like a fancy guest house in somebody's backyard, maybe. But uh, Stephanie, uh, final thoughts before we move on? Yeah, all I'm going to say is message me on Instagram or something. If you got one, mama needs a she shed. <laughs> mama needs a she shed. So you want a she shed of the original yes. man. That would yes. be quite yes. the boast if you had that in your backyard. <laughs> oh, yeah, that part of the original uh, cabins at uh, Fort Wilderness. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just awesome. Uh, all right, let's move on to this drone show. Here, here's the thing about drones. Um, I feel like there was – we've been talking about drone shows forever um, they had talked about them way back in the day when they like had all these patents for all these different drone shows and things they were going to do. We've seen parks like Disneyland Paris have these amazing drone shows, not just this one, this Disney Electrical Sky Parade, but also the um, the Marvel one with the big Thor hammer and stuff like that. We know that Universal is testing them. So it strikes me as odd that it has not been a thing for Disney. They did one in winter I think we looked it up as like 2016 uh, at um, at Disney Springs, and then now they've come back with this one that's going to be at Disney Springs, which is going to be called Dreams That Soar. So, I, I again, it feels weird that it took this long for this to happen, um, and I feel like there should be drones everywhere. The new Epcot show should have had drones. We should have seen them anywhere else. But let me throw this to Shannon. Uh, are you a fan of the drones? You think maybe, why, why aren't they doing it? Who asked to draw more crowds to Disney Springs during <laughs> that nighttime? Wow. Okay. Honestly, like who asked for this? Uh, I think it'll be cool. I just don't get the idea of putting it at Springs. That's all. Okay. Well, I mean, so I, I wonder if it has something to do with wind. Like, I know that in Disneyland, there are a lot of nights where they don't do fireworks because mm -hmm. it's too windy. Uh, are they afraid that uh, the wind at the Magic Kingdom would grab a drone and throw it at a kid over on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train? I, I literally, I, I'm to trying be to figure out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to <laughs> okay. figure that out. Um, but, I, but, I mean, Stephanie, I've seen drones at Dollywood. Help me out here. <laughs> Well, I agree. I don't know why they're doing it at Disney Springs, other than they're trying to give somebody a reason to stay super late at Disney Springs. Because before they had Pleasure Island, right? You were out there mm -hmm. for the nightclubs and things, and now you don't have that. You have food establishments, and that's fine, but you don't have any kind of entertainment necessarily unless they have a, a band out there. So maybe that's why. But I do think I like what you're saying, Rob, about Disneyland Paris, because they have the backdrop of the castle to be doing the drones around that. And I think it makes more sense. So they don't really have that at Disney Springs. The aerophile uh, air balloon, <laughs> maybe they could do it around that. I don't know. Characters in Cafe? flight? Characters in flight, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Allison, thoughts? 
You know, I often say at Saratoga, so I wonder what could be uh, like what could be seen from like the dock there. And if you actually get like kind of a, a private nighttime show, if you're staying at the resort and get away from the crowds of of Disney Springs. But yeah, I don't understand if it's wind like it's the wind is the same there. It's just like the drones will just be like thrown into the like the Lego construction things. So I, I don't really know. It's just like this is where they piloted it like six years ago, I guess. So this is the only yeah. place they can imagine doing it. Um, yeah, I I do think it's like kind of nice to have some kind of like entertainment. They don't do the, the New Year's Eve every night anymore. So it's something to watch. But um, but yeah, I would like to see them utilize drones. Like it's been, yeah, we've been talking about it for a long time. Six years, it that's fast for Disney. <laughs> Yeah. It, you know what? It could be really cool. Like, I mean, okay, so for, for Epcot Forever, they went LED kites and uh, ski doos and not uh, not drones. And especially like something <laughs> like the, like you've got this huge Animal Kingdom, uh, like, you know, concert hall-ish outdoor amphitheater and you put kites but not drones. Like that Lion King kite would definitely hurt a kid more than a drone would. So I can't imagine yeah. that it's the liability and that would be a perfect place to do it because you are trying to, you know, uh, respect the animals and all that kind of stuff. And there's plenty of space it feels like to put it out there. But Allison, as you were talking about Saratoga Springs, I was thinking, I remember seeing the one at Disney Springs when they did the um, the holiday one and you would stand over, uh, we stood over on the banks where uh, Bongo's was, which I guess now is Summer House, and you would look across and see it actually over what looked like over top of Saratoga Springs. So it'll be interesting to see where you can see that from, but I'm excited for it to happen. But again, it's a limited time magic situation. So go see it while you can. Um, Let's move on to Tiana Watch. And again, I try to spare y'all from talking about Tiana every single solitary <laughs> week. Uh, if they've like they've painted the sidewalk or if they've put up a new bush or whatever, we report it. So if you if you need the daily updates, you can hit WDWNT.com. But I feel like there was some significant movement this week in uh, in the Tiana Bayou Adventure, especially in the Magic Kingdom. So they've they put real plants in, which tells me it feels like things are getting close, at least on the outside. Um, and then they did some testing, and so they put up signs, which I think is smart. Uh, if I was walking by with my kid uh, and they saw people coming down the flume, it would be like, oh, it's open. So it's nice that they put up the signs. I'm not sure how much people are paying attention to the signs. But I also saw that uh, somebody posted this on Twitter, the original Splash Mountain also when it was testing because it's so open also had ride testing signs very similar. Look at to the this. care that went into that sign. <laughs> yeah. Who did these signs? It looks like it's from Print Shop Deluxe in like 1994. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a real a realtor sign near your neighbor's lawn. And I'm sorry, are those music notes next to the Sorry Friends? Yes, are those they're music supposed notes? to be. Or, or are they golf clubs? Because no. I, don't, I feel like... Wow. <laughs> they should wow. be like jaunty or maybe a little like variety in the music right. notes, but it's just like quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. And then like pop sticker art on here. Like I, I thought it was a joke when I first saw the picture. <laughs> I thought someone did a mock up like they should put these signs there so people don't think it's open and then I click the article. <laughs> oh no, those are professionally made signs by the leaders in the theme park industry. You what think at the last minute crazy. they were like they were like, Hey Daryl, we need some signs. Oh, okay, let me uh let me print some out real quick and we'll put them up <laughs> yes. and I think we can get that done pretty corrugated cardboard, sure. We'll get that taken care of for you, no problem. Um wow, y'all are sassy tonight. I love it. Um <laughs> So, uh, so along with this, the Imagineers uh, got to ride it, and you know, oh, look at them, wearing wearing uh, ponchos like uh, like noobs. Um, so weak. they were on here. It's yeah, it's weak sauce exactly. Uh, one of the quotes was that it said one of the Imagineers could be heard saying, "It works," and I'm thinking the flume already worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> 
It already worked. It was in fine working order when everyone wrote it in January of 2023, right? So it worked. Well, not quite fine working order. That thing was going down every 13 minutes. <laughs> we were that. So Sugar, maybe we're going it was down really swinging. A considerable amount of time that they had to revamp the entire ride system because it had been neglected, not only from the very long like COVID closure, but then after that, they were like, eh, why bother fixing this? It's just going down to restart it. And then they try to like yes. turn the button on and they're like, oh, we have to rebuild the whole thing. Whoops. Well, I don't know what it looks like on the inside. None of us do, but uh, I'm hoping that they are moving as fast on the uh, on the inside as they are on the outside. But one of the things that is very glaringly clear to me is as they made this announcement of summer offerings, which included Joy appearing at Pixar Place in um, in Hollywood Studios and the 30th oh. anniversary of The Lion King and the drone show and all that, they didn't mention Tiana's Bayou Adventure opening. So we know it's opening Ooh, summer. Could have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, and, and we also know that it's going to be later for the one in Disneyland. So the Disneyland is at this point where they're like, hey, there are flowers on it, which seems like a deja vu because we said this about the one at Magic Kingdom. Um, so, you know, obviously this one's a little bit behind. But they did announce that the gift shops uh, were going to be changing uh, in Critter Country. Uh, so they're going to be closing in May for construction, which is great because you're already going to have Tiana's Bayou Adventure closed, Haunted Mansion closed, and now you're going to have these <laughs> gift shops closed. Um, it, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a mess, uh, over there, but, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Let's talk a little bit. Let's move on from this one and let's talk about, um, uh, the permits that are filed at Disney Animal Kingdom. One of the things we've talked about, we were talking about Epic Universe and, and Universal in general is that they don't really tell you that things are going to be happening until they're almost already happening. Uh, I keep joking about Velocicoaster was almost done, and they were like, what coaster? What are you talking about? And then they made their big announcement about it. So we, <laughs> with Disney, we know that there's a lot of blue sky stuff going on. We know they have a lot of money to spend. A lot of it's going towards cruise ships. We'll talk about that later. But this is, this is a, a positive note towards them actually doing something, is that at Disney's Animal Kingdom, they have filed uh, permits to start uh, – a, uh, a an area f with parking spaces and imagineering trailers that they're going to build just north of Collie River that has a connection to Dino Land. So our jump to conclusion, Matt, has told us that this is going to be the beginning of uh, of them renovating uh, the uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom and Dino Land. Uh, Stephanie, I, I talked about this on another show. It's like we're talking about that they're spending this $42 billion of the $60 billion they have over the next 10 years on expansion. And yet, if they're starting with Dino Land and shutting that down to build something new, I feel like you're taking away capacity to put back capacity and maybe it's not as much capacity. Yeah, absolutely. They're not adding to, they're changing or plussing out, as they like to say, which they use that in a, in a wrong connotation, I think, because um, plussing, I think, is adding to something and not necessarily changing the entire thing. But um, I am a fan of Indiana Jones, and I love Indiana Jones, <clears throat> excuse me, at Disneyland. So hopefully we get something similar to that ride, because I really love Dinosaur. And I wish that that was, we were just there a couple of weeks ago and, you know, wanted to ride that for like maybe the last time. I don't know. And so I hope that they add some like um, nods to dinosaur, the whole dino land area and keep, cause that was kind of original to the park, right? Because they were wanting to do the magical beast area and that eventually became Pandora, but you know, maybe they will keep this and they will have, um, you know, some, some hidden Easter eggs or something or literal dino eggs hidden around. Ooh, yeah. got him. All right. Uh, Shannon. <laughs> You know, I hesitate to say what I really want to happen here because I wanted that Poppins attraction and it kills me to this day that it didn't happen. I, I want to see Indy here in the worst way. I think it would bring life into not only that area of Animal Kingdom, but Animal Kingdom in general, right? Like you do have Pandora and that's great, but um, it's for me personally, Animal Kingdom is still a half day park. And I think a lot of people could say the same. So they need to go big here. I really don't want to see Zootopia come. So fingers crossed. Okay, Allison. <laughs> 
Um, you know, it's it, it's bittersweet for me because I love Dinosaur. Um, I actually really like Dinoland area. I think like what they did on a shoestring budget is really like clever. And um, it is also like the best area of the park if you have young children now because you have the dig site um, and you have like a spinner ride. And it's just like we spend a lot of time there. And I want to know how long we're going to have to go without this. <laughs> while they're building the new thing. And is my daughter going to be 16 when we build that, when they finally finish it and we get to like go on these rides? Cause it's not impossible. When they started the Epcot stuff, I was pregnant. She is going to kindergarten. So like, <laughs> what is gonna happen? <laughs> She's basically not gonna do anything at Animal Kingdom for quite some time, I think. So 2024, Let's look for 2034 and a, and a Nat Geo special Animal Kingdom becoming, and, uh, <laughs> and perhaps those things will happen. I agree. Like, I think most people would say Animal Kingdom, probably they would rank it fourth. It, there's a, it's a beautiful park. There's a, that's, there's a lot of stuff that is nice there, but there's not enough, and they need to do more. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that they're shutting down things and then, like, you know, putting a new coat of paint on it and opening it up as something different. I, I love Indy, too, Shannon. I hope that they do a different Indy here, maybe something more akin to the Tokyo version. I don't know, but I would love for them to do something here. But I hope they don't shut all of it down at once. But maybe, yeah. I don't know. It would be great if they shut down, like, the side where they're going to build in Kanto. And then just did that and left Dinosaur where it is. But I'm, Stephanie, I'm with you. Every time I go, it's like, let me just ride Dinosaur and go see Tough to Be a Bug and just do this stuff which one more time just in case this is the last time I'm ever going to see it. So um, speaking of things uh, that you want to do, Tom Sawyer's Island has the barrel bridge. That's pretty iconic, right? I mean, that's one of those things you kind of got to you gotta do whenever you're there. But it's been down for a while. And so uh, the barrel bridge just came back and the, the question at, after nine months and the question that I'm going to have for you guys is <laughs> with Tom Sawyer Island, there's, there's problematic things about Tom Sawyer Island. We're not going to talk about that. But, um, but what I want to know about Tom Sawyer Island is like, is, is that a place that you go when you go to, to, uh, to um, Magic Kingdom because it's one of the places when my kids were little we used to take them to just burn off their energy and there was that, and all those places seem to be gone but Stephanie you're you're like yep that's what I do <laughs> yes absolutely that's what we do um yeah you can turn kind of turn them loose because they're contained in that area now there's ways to get hurt you know you're going through the caves it's uneven surfaces there's stairs and rocks and things like that that they can fall and hurt themselves on so you do have to actually pay attention to your children you can't just let them run away you know huh, um, weird. I've tried but yes <laughs> so, but yeah mm -hmm. I I really like Tom Sawyer Island I think it's neat to watch the the boat go around and then all the rafts come in and out and there's little places that you can sit and nurse a baby or just rock a baby in the rocking chair it's really a nice uh, quiet area sometimes too I mean yes you've got the kids running around the fort but we have pictures of you know the toddlers and the play pens and the my son and my other daughters running around and you know, up and down those bridges. So I, I hope that they keep it. I really do. Yeah. Uh, Allison, is this one of those things that you take your kid to? And also, I, I, I it, should it continue to stay Tom Sawyer Island? Or does she care that it's Tom Sawyer Island? I don't know. I mean, she may eventually. She's not familiar with that book yet, but we do a lot of, uh, like, we do a lot of like reading about older things, like we're really into the Pollyanna Golden Book right now. Um, but Tom Sawyer, Sawyer Island has, I think, the only, well, right now, the only uh, playground in the Magic Kingdom. So uh, while you can't totally not pay attention to them on the playground, you can, if you're like, stay here, you can burn off that energy. Um, and it's like a perfect in the middle of the day when like the lines are at its peak and you've spent five hours like containing them, like, Okay, you can't, 
don't don't follow that person so closely in the line and like you can't just like run back and forth like you have to stand still in this line and we're gonna, there's so much so many rules and when we're walking around cr- crowds it's like you have to walk in a straight line this is very hard for small children and so if you just have that like break in the middle of the day um plus i really like the theming i think it's charming i like to be somewhere there, where there's a lot of shade and you can just kind of rest for a, a little bit and get a a breath of air. It's somewhere I used to go when I would go to the parks by myself, but before I had a kid and just like read a book for a little bit. Um, uh, and very different days in my life, but I, I like the area and I would like to see it stay because it's like the thing that reminds me of like the 1970s uh, Magic Kingdom that I, we don't have a lot of that anymore, especially now after they got rid of the original Fort Wilderness cabins and decimated them with condos. <laughs> But you're okay with that. You, you're getting over it. Um, I, I'm looking at the chat. Tom Sawyer Island's uh, sponsored by Band-Aid, Todd says. Uh, Fire Chief says, where else in, uh, in Disney do you get to shoot innocent people on the steamboat? That was the thing. that The, the, the guns went away, and then they came back. And uh, and then Lisa says, put a restaurant on Tom Sawyer Island and rename the island. I I, I don't disagree. Yeah, that, like I don't, I don't think the theme specifically matters to the kids. I think you're right, Allison. It's one of those things where, like, this is the place like this is like you're getting all geared up you get to go and run around and it's a fun trip over there you get on the raft and you get over there and it's like where are we going to go first and you've got you know the fort and it's a place to explore and it's a safe zone really to explore in because you don't they're not you know you don't have to be right on top of them but there's all kinds of little things to do and i think it's underrated for parents who don't know about it because it's not obvious that it's there. I think you have right. to tell, have somebody yeah. tell you that it's there. And so if you're listening and you've never been, take your kid. Uh, Cause it, it's one of those things where it, it's a neat thing. I wish they could build a bridge to get there, but there's this thing called the, um, uh, the, the ferry <laughs> or the steamboat or the Mark Twain oh. that comes through and you can't build a bridge tall enough. So I, uh, you know, you'd have to build it over top of it. I don't know. You'd have to open it. I would, I wish there was an easier way to get to and from rather than waiting for the, for the raft. But that is part of the experience is getting on the raft and going over there. So, um, I was talking to my wife about it. She was like, oh, they should add that, uh, honey, I shrunk the kids that they used to have at uh, Hollywood studios oh. and put that over there. And I'm like, okay, it doesn't work yeah. thematically. And she's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> let's make it work. Let's put it together. Let's make it happen. Um, so let's move on to another play area, but this one is in Disneyland. Uh, this is <laughs> Donald's Duck Pond Splash Pad. So it's finally reopened. Everybody loves a good splash pad, right? Um, this is one of those things that opened for the press when they reopened Toontown after it being closed for a year. They reopened it. And this is one of those things I keep coming back to because they redid Toontown and seemed to not think about it having people in it when they built it because it seems like they are continually replacing fountains and astroturf and all kinds of other things and so they opened up this thing after it being closed for so long and when our reporters were there they found all kinds of problems like the fact you've got this really cool donald mailbox that is blocked by a fence so you can't really see the entire thing so it's like it's there and it's cool but you can't quite see it uh, mm-hmm. And then they have these splash pads, which you can you can go on and they've got a wet area, which is this is all timed out with, you know, uh, the sequences about everything. But then there's a dry area and the dry area it puddles up and it leaks over into the dry area. And then they've got like water riding like this just reopened and they've got water coming down the sides here. They've got this great little area for for plants that has none in it. It's got a nice little dirt patch, a little piece of little patch of heaven way out west. Um, but like all of this stuff here, when I'm looking at it, it's like you just redid this. You just redid this, and it already has all these things going on with it. Because again, everybody loves a splash pad. That's that's a that's a pretty cool thing. But it just seems like it's a little bit of a problem. Stephanie, you want to talk about this a little bit? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be able to tell you more after we experience it in September. We're going out there, so we'll we'll see how my kids can destroy things or um, you know 
totally slip and get hurt or something. But they love the Casey Jr. Uh, splash pad area, splash area, if you will, at the Magic Kingdom. So I have to bring extra change of clothes or like extra socks because they can get completely soaked. I mean, they really can. But they're dodging like the uh, giraffe spitting on them or, you know, the camel, even in Adventureland, they love to stand there and get splashed or spit on, you know, by the camel there. So I definitely see the appeal of this. What I'm wondering about is the execution. And why in the world are we not able to go up inside of Donald's boat? Why did they cut that out? I wish I could tell you. Um, uh, You know, I know, uh, Shannon, you didn't really have anything to say about this, but you did say you didn't particularly care for Journey of Water. Um, I mean, (laughs) thoughts about this? No, I got You know, I'm not having kids. I never appreciated a splash pad, but when we took my niece to Disney Springs and they have that, like, I wouldn't even call it a splash pad, but that little fountain area, I mean, she loved it. So I understand the importance of having this for the little ones. Um, It's unfortunate that you have these things go awry, but I guess it's better than nothing at all, right? So. Take yeah, I guess you. so. Yeah. Um, Allison, tell me as a kid, you never like wanted to go and run up and like catch the water out at uh, uh, Journey into Imagination, right? I mean, oh, that's that's uh, that's that's my my famous thing at three years old. I was chasing the jumping water and there's tons of photos of it. And then like up through the age of like 12 or 13, like where they had like the water just like spouting up between uh, Future World and World Showcase, I would just see that and like sprint and then we'd have to buy a whole new outfit and shoes get those like Mickey Keds with like, <laughs> to have like a million of those because every single day I would get like completely soaked and then the day was ruined if we didn't change. So yeah, no, I, 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 those weren't official splash pads, but I made them official splash pads. <laughs> And I feel like splash pads used to be all over the place, actually, that you would see them more often in uh, in Epcot. They used to have them on your trip over to World Showcase on the yeah. right. They had them and they've got the one that they renovated at Epcot over near uh, Test Track that's already, I think, not working. Um, but it's one of those things where it seems like a great thing. Kids love doing it. I, I Again, my wife would always bring like a change of clothes for the kids after the first time. You always you always learn after the first time that the next time you go. My dad never learned. New outfit every time. <laughs> well, we I mean, that's that why they have gift shops. Like 12 new kids under the, under the <laughs> air conditioning in our hotel. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, it's like, all right, let's let's throw money at this problem. Let's get you dry. That's great. Um, so so let me talk a little bit about returning magic because we've been kind of like you know with the duck pond thing, we're a little bit down and I, uh, on on Disney for that. But there are a lot of little things that I've been watching on the blog that have come up that I've like, why are they doing these things? It's great. I, I don't I'm not saying these are bad things. These are really good things. Little things that have been added recently, like um, there's the classic animation references uh, return to Storybook Circus. These little uh, like, you know, props and things that they have here. We've got the, the Dino Glide plane is back at uh, at um, Toy Story Land after being gone for two years. We have brought back Wondrous Journeys, uh, yes. the the uh, fireworks at uh, well, I mean, this is apparently Shannon's favorite uh, at Disneyland, and then uh, the vintage style signs have been returned here to uh, to the boardwalk, and the original loop for the land music, and the Germany Friendship Boats dock is open for the first time in years, and uh, this little Mickey Mouse from Epcot found his way to Disneyland, even if it is at a DVC kiosk. Uh, the sculpture returned to. Uh, to uh, uh, Avatar. And then in Journey into Imagination, this water cooler effect, this bubbling water cooler effect has been fixed too. And a lot of the things that we've said since COVID were maintenance, please. Can we get some, don't de esta maintenance. Where, where is maintenance? Because we need some, and that started with the Three Caballeros Grand Fiesta um, tour. But there's so many of these things that I'm like, this is awesome that you did this. Now, is this part of that $60 billion you said you were going to be spending? <laughs> or is it just like like, uh, like um, Karen from, uh, from maintenance finally got back off of her maternity leave and now she's actually getting stuff done again? <laughs> like, I don't know what's actually happening, but uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Stephanie, thoughts? 
Yeah, somebody is trying to pay attention at least to the little things, and I think that really does matter. Again, we were there, you know, on St. Patrick's Day just a few days before that as well, and I, I really did notice that there is a lack of this in the parks, and I'm glad that some of this is coming back, but there's still a long ways to go, and there was more trash than I've noticed, and I, I do still, like you said, Rob, go over and pick it up and throw it away if I can, right. um, but you know, that's, that's just habit, but yeah, I feel like the more you you can add to these go back to the original way things were and kind of give those little tidbits and and um, things for the people who are real big fans like us on this panel I think we notice them more and it makes us feel like they care and that's really what we've been lacking for the last I don't know 20 years or something no, it's great. And again, this is all positive. Like, uh, I, I'm excited about this, but it, <laughs> something in my mind is just a little curious as to why now, why are they doing this? Is it because uh, the summer is coming and they want to make sure things are right? Or or maybe somebody was tripping over that dino glider in the back and they're like, what? This used to be outside. Why? Let's get this outside again. Shannon, you were really excited about Wondrous coming back. Uh, is this your favorite fireworks show? I love Wondrous Journeys, and I actually didn't see the fireworks version of it. Like you said, Rob, there were nights when they they simply don't do it or they can't do it because of the wind. Um, I love this show so much. It is so special, and I hope they never take it away. Now, I wanted to mention one thing about the music loop and how important that is. You know, recently I was I was taking a cat nap while my husband was watching the players, which is a professional golf tournament, and I heard. <laughs> music come on and I pop my eyes open. I look at the TV, I go Epcot. And it was just the players. And I realized that the music that we now have at Epcot is just like stock music. And I, I, I knew this a while back, but it really hit me hard. Like, no, no, Epcot music cannot be other places. And I also heard it watching some European um, YouTube video, travel video, and they were using the current Epcot loop. And it's infuriating. So great to see that that's back, even if it was temporary. And yeah, Wonder's Journeys. Let's go. Okay. Anything before we move on, Allison? No, go for it. All right. So let's talk about pin trading, which, by the way, Allison's response to this was ugh. Uh, but I, but pin trading is, is a thing that I always thought was pretty cool. We did this with my kids, although my son found it hard to give away a pin. It was very mm -hmm. weird. It was like, he was like, there, we actually did a thing where I was like, okay, you have this Chippendale. Why don't you trade it with that cast member who has the same Chippendale? And he even had a problem with that at first. Like, it's like, no, these, these are, these are mine. Like, I'm not giving them to that. It was like, it was a problem. And then he got to the point where he was chasing down strangers, like going, ah, oh, I need that. <laughs> Can I trade this for this? Um, I missed being able to see this. And I think this obviously went away with COVID, the idea of cast members having to interact like within six feet of, uh, of people. They have this little TikTok video about pin trading returning. Uh, don't bother watching that. You'll think less of Disney for it. But um, I, I do think like for me, I love the chaser ones that they have. And they're the ones that have the little hidden Mickey on it. Um, and, uh, and, I, I loved seeing those sets. There was a Country Bear set. They did some that were weird, like here's the cell phone set. It's Stitch as a cell phone, Minnie as a cell phone. I didn't love those, but there were some of those, like the bathroom signs. They had the like the men's and women's bathroom sign ones, which were just yeah. like, I loved seeing that. So uh, just so we don't see Allison's eyes roll back into her head on this one. <laughs> Stephanie, let me ask you about um, about this one, because you, you were cast when they had pins or no? Yes, but I didn't get to, I, I was oh, yeah. in entertainment, so I didn't get to do any trading. <laughs> so, but my kids do, and we have two sets of lanyards. That's your, that's your key there, Rob. You got to have the lanyard where you keep the pins or something that the kids don't want to trade because they like this right. one. And then you have the, the fillers, as I call them, the ones that you're like, oh, I could give or take or whatever. I don't really care. And those are the ones you go out and you trade for something like my son. He, if there's an Oswald anything, it's, it, that's where he's going. He's going to get that Oswald. So yeah, I feel like the, the only time that I can say it is a little bit annoying to me is when you are holding up a line at one of the gift shops to stand there and look at the pin board yeah. and there's a cast member like, okay, hurry up, make your, make your selection. And I'm like, I would just want to pay for my stuff. Like, just let me pay and get out. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that that has definitely been a problem in the past. I saw, I think it was Lisa maybe in the chat that said uh, bathroom signs. Excuse me. Yeah, bathroom signs. Uh, I I love again as a graphic designer, I pay attention to like the little details. These are some of them. Like, you know, Polynesian bathrooms or the ones for oh, the Matterhorn yeah. or, the or Tomorrowland. whatever. Yeah. yeah, the Tomorrowland ones. But, like, but it's that's... also specific to the area and the ride and everything. And I think that makes more sense than just a generic, like, stitch one or something that doesn't really have a right. correlation. Right, like the cell phone thing and all that kind of stuff. But again, you're right. That is, a, the, You have to be careful of the ones you don't want to trade. You don't want to have one on your lanyard that you would give up for anything. So you want to make sure to tuck those away. We actually had a little baggie. It wasn't even a separate lanyard. We had a little baggie that was the – these are the untouchables. Uh, and then we go. got to a point where we even stopped using lanyards. We would just have a bag of pins, and I, we would carry them into the park, and my son would go, uh, 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 pin, I need a pin, I need a pin. And I'd <laughs> hand him one, and he'd run over here, and he'd trade with a cast member, and he'd come back with it. The Epcot logos, before oh. Disney did the Epcot logos, that was one uh, that was like, I mean, they did like a set you could purchase, but the cast member ones, mm -hmm. that's the thing. I can't wait to see what they do with that. Uh, finish us off on this one, Shannon. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I recently got into pin trading as an adult. When I was a kid, I was the same as your son, Rob. I didn't like to give up my pins. Now I go <laughs> to the outlets. Here's a hack. I buy super cheap, crappy pins from the outlets, and then I bring those yes. to just trade for funsies. So I like it. I'm glad it's back. Yeah, it, it was infuriating. I would buy him a set of traders, which is you buy the lanyard that comes with the pins that are generic. And you're like, these are the ones you trade. And then he's like, no. And I'm like, where am I getting more? Like, these are the ones you have to trade. Like, I'm not going to do that. Also, Amazon, you can go on and get like a bag of 25 for a really good deal that you can go into the parks and trade. They just have to be the 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 real ones. I, I feel like, Allison, I know you and I have talked about the American Express had the like the white glove treatment. They would give you a pin with that. Um, yeah. I can't remember if they would let you trade that one or not, but I'm it sure you still is. have yours. So what happened, because this is, I had to wear this in my brief uh, stint as a cast member, and you had very large adult men pulling on my neck to be like, what? <laughs> like, and it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And what they had, like, I, this is why it's not just eye rolling because I don't do pins. It's eye rolling because this is like the worst thing for cast members. And back then it was relatively new. And like, I worked in Adventureland Liberty Square and like the person who would do Haunted Mansion at like, at the offloading area used to wear it. And then because that is a conveyor belt mm -hmm. that is moving, that was too dangerous and so that that person in that position could take that up because they, they kept falling it was like unbelievably dangerous and it was also the time of the white glove treatment so at the end of the day you had a whole lanyard of just the white glove treatment american express uh pins Aww. i think they made some kind of rule later about it or like they that's did. when they made the rule like that you couldn't give a second of the same pin to the cast member wearing it but at the time there was no such rule it was the wild west <laughs> people like, you cannot I, don't like it. I don't like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that so that dangerous. is a rule yeah that is a rule by the way that you you cannot trade a trade with a cast member a pin that they already have on their lanyard so that's why I did that trade or told my son to trade for the exact same one. And again, he, he did it and then he regretted it and we went back and traded back. Like, I mean, it was, oh. it was a thing. Yeah, I was bad. It was bad. But again, he's over it and he's a maniac with it now. I mean, he took his friends to Disney and he was like, let me tell you about pen trading because they've been have they've had boards. What makes this different is that cast members are doing it again. The lanyards are right. back, whether you have it, they have it on their waist or they have it around their neck. The lanyards are back Those and you can trade. People. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes um, people uh, that are um, that are guests are not all that nice, and that's why we have this segment called "It Came oh, no. from the Parks," uh, nice where we go stuff. through. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, where we go through the uh, the last week of all of the weird stories that have been on WDWNT.com, and we, we we read them to you, and each of the panelists will pick one. They can all pick the same one if they want to, but one story to talk about because uh, they're all they're all a little bizarre. So uh, let's start with this first one, which is um, 
which is uh, angry cast guest uh, angry guest grabs cast member by the vest during Magic Kingdom Festival of Fantasy Parade. And again, the longer the title, usually the more crazy the story. Uh, video a guest jumps into the aquasphere uh, at Tokyo Disney, and that's at Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, and then a man charged with robbery, a third degree felony for stealing Mickey Mouse ears off guest's head. Can't wait to get our legal expert on talking about that one. And a guest arrested for stealing Disney 100 Pandora charms from Uptown Jewelers at Magic Kingdom. So uh, I'm going to start and we're going to go clockwise. I'm going to say, Allison, which, uh, which one do you want to talk about? Yeah, sure. Let, let's do Mickey ears. But I don't even want to give a legal perspective. I, we could talk about the elements of robbery in Florida and why this like uh, why this meets the uh, meets the threshold for that. And you can make out the charges and the uh, prima facie case for that. But you know, what I want to talk about is like it. I think the reason that this person is so angry about like losing Mickey ears and needing to find them again is because they are so absurdly expensive. Those things must cost 75 cents to make. And they're like <laughs> 35, I don't remember. I looked the last trip and I was just like, what? Like, this is an insane amount of money. And if then that gets lost and you're like, you're like frantic, that feels like losing a watch or feels like losing something of great value. Um, obviously this person is a lunatic. Don't go, go snatching things off people's bodies. That's an insane thing to do. Don't do that. It's gonna, it's gonna lend you uh, a little visit to the sheriff's office. And it also may lend you trespass from Disney as I'm sure it happened here. But I think that like at base, People are super, super angry because they are spending far too much money on something that is like probably costs pennies to manufacture. Well, very possible. I, I think, though, with this one, that it's one of those like fire ready aim situations where the guy goes, oh, give me that. And it's like, wait a minute. Can we have a conversation first? Maybe they were hers. Maybe they're not. But it's like, nah, just react. Just react first. That's always uh, well, that's what leads to these stories. Uh, Shannon, what do you got? If I could give one piece of sage advice from my years in Disney, it's that whenever there's a parade, find yourself a spot that's kind of off on its own where you can have space. And even if you don't get a great view, trust me, you'll be okay. Because the two times that I've probably seen the biggest scuffles in Disney personally with my own eyeballs were parades. Um, Mulan parade years ago in Hollywood Studios. This is before we had our phones at our fingertips, but this guy was screaming at the cast member because he was going to miss his flight and he could not cross that parade route. And very recently, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, um, there was a family that was shoved up against me and making commentary about how their child could not see because they walked up as the parade was coming through and I had waited for my spot, rightfully so. So anyway, parades are bad news. <laughs> So as it's, seen it's, by this article. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the parade's fault is what you're saying. It is. Um, yeah, and again, be nice to cast members, please. Like, again, don't – this is this is somebody who, who – there was a cast member involved with this and a guest being angry with the cast member, although we have seen uh, some ugliness with parades like you're talking about, Shannon, uh, recently with some folks. It was like an elderly couple like basically yeah. like throwing hands with another elderly person. It's like – it's a parade. There's going to be another one in a couple hours, if that's if that works better for you. But uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a problem. Uh, Stephanie, what you got? Okay, so we talked about guys and and girls too jumping into water and saying like you don't know what electrical stuff is down there, you don't know what mechanical stuff is down there. Just don't do it. I don't care how many views on TikTok or YouTube or whatever you get with that, but that's just not what you want to do. Although I will um, pull you back to uh, the week that I was there, and I did actually stay at this resort at the. Um, Port Orleans Riverside when the lady swam in the river topless and I promise oh you it was gosh. not me okay I was there that day <laughs> but it was not me <laughs> and I just when you look at that water now this is this is gross. different I, I yeah it's gross right but the river at Riverside you don't know what alligators are in there and snakes yeah. are in there it's very peaceful it's serene they do have boats that come through there I get that but my gosh, I mean, if you can't hold your alcohol, just stay out of the water. I love that your problem with the woman who was topless in the water was the quality of the water. 
and not the fact that she was at Disney World naked in the water, but the fact that, oh, do you know what's in that water? Why are you doing that? Uh, how about just I mean, don't be topless they, in the water? That's true, but they didn't give her any kind of instruction. They didn't say it was not – you were not able to do that. That was not against right. the rule or posted anywhere. Yeah. Right. Men go topless all the time. What's the problem, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. That's absolutely okay. I I, I don't. I have no idea what I was talking about there. I, I apologize. Um, so uh, <laughs> this was something that it was on my radar, and Shannon was like, "We're talking about this." Um, yeah. it's, uh, so Disney has some ships. I don't know if you knew that or not. And plus the fact that they have are spending a lot of money on ships out of this billions that they're spending. So they're about to have their eighth ship. And they revealed that the ship is going to be called the Destiny, and it is going to be a heroes and villains themed ship. So, uh, you know, we we heard about the adventure. We know the treasure is launching in uh, in in December of 2024. Adventure is going to be out of uh, out of uh, Asia, I think, and it's going to be um, uh, 2025, maybe 2026. And now this one, which is a sister ship to the uh, the Wish and the Treasure. So, Shannon. Here's your moment. Yeah. Talk about the destiny. First of all, I love the name, but I feel like villains are finally getting the attention that they deserve. I We knew that there was some um, idea of a fifth gate years and years ago, and that it was going to be a villains theme park. Um, they have since floated the idea of that land behind uh, Big Thunder Mountain being villains themed. And so I feel like there has been a desire, a want for villains to have their time to shine. I know that this is also heroes, so like, okay, you do have to have the good guys in there as well, but um, I'm really excited for this theme, and I hope they keep it to heroes and villains strictly, because I don't want to see Marvel, sorry. I don't like that. They had that on the wish. You don't like Marvel? Okay. Not really. All right, well, I get that. <laughs> um, okay, so um, uh, Allison, thoughts on this one? Have you been on a Disney cruise? Are you going to wait until you can yeah. ride with villains? I have and um, I'd like to go again at some point and I think like that would be like the perfect one my daughter loves villains um, and I totally agree that they're like underutilized there's so much you could do um, and like villains in Vogue used to be like much cooler than it is it's yeah. like it's the only place where I feel like it's you really get like a villains theme but like villains dining like I mean one of the most memorable parts of the last trip was my my kid meeting like evil queen the the wicked queen from um snow white she still talks about it all the time there's there's so much personality so much that you can do and like to be on a ship with all sorts of theming that would just be so so fun um and i'd make a special trip just for that i'd be like okay this is what we're doing this year okay uh stephanie I do, too, like the idea of the different character interactions that you can have, and I think that that is something that they typically don't do. Like, what if you get to meet Ursula? That's That would be cool. <laughs> um, and, you know, just to theme the different restaurants to one villain or, or a combination or something. So that would be pretty neat. Yeah. Um, I do think that they've had a lot of issues with the wish and maybe the treasure will kind of compensate for that. And then maybe this one will compensate for something that the treasure will see. <laughs> so well, it's still far out. It's still kind of pie in the sky right now. So we'll see. Okay. Um, I think because of time, we're going to go ahead and end it there. Uh, we'll talk about May the 4th next week uh, and the season of the force that are coming to Disneyland. And then uh, also there's some Easter stuff. Actually, I said next week, we're going to be off next week. So there will be no show next Sunday night because it's Easter and everybody wants to be with their families uh, or uh, out Easter egg hunting or uh, I don't know, drinking. I have no idea what you people do on Easter, but uh, <laughs> we will not have a show next week, but we will be back with more Park Center and we will be live every Sunday night after for a while. So if you guys are jonesing for live from WDWNT, please come hang out with us on uh, on Sunday nights. And also we have Deep in the Plus, which is our uh, Disney Plus movie and TV review show that we do. Uh, here's a look at what's coming up. We had um, You Lucky Dog with uh, Patrick, and we did that for St. Patrick's Day. Home on the Range last week with Emma. This next week... We're going to be doing X-Men, the original X-Men movie with Stephanie, and then the week after that it's going to be Muppets Most Wanted. But Stephanie and I were going to do 
We, this happened so much. Allison, you would appreciate this because this happened like every time with Allison and I. Uh, we were going to do a, a baseball movie. We were going to do um, uh, Rookie of the Year. Is that the one? Rookie of the Year. Yeah. And, and it's a 20th Century Fox that is now part of Disney, and it was on Disney Plus at some point maybe, but it's not there now because I was looking through, and I was like, uh, Stephanie, uh, this isn't here. <laughs> So and neither is Angels in the Outfield. So that was oh. weird. But because uh, you know opening day is coming soon, we were going to do that. But now we're going to do X Men, which surprised me when Stephanie was like, "Oh, well, let's just do X Men." What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that. We'll be doing that this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Uh, also, a big shout out to our Wigs members. We love our Wigs, the WDWNT Interglobe Society. Uh, this is our Patreon program. If you want to be part of the family, uh, come join at patreon.com forward slash WDWNT. Uh, as I said, the uh, news tonight is on hiatus for a while, so Wednesday night we'll, we'll have a deep in the plus. Next week we'll not have uh, for Sunday for Easter a, uh, a park center, but we will be back the week after that with more Park Center. And thank you guys so much for being uh, with us tonight. If you are a Wigs member, there is a post show after this, so please come join us. Uh, otherwise, have a great week. We'll see you guys next time. Eloquent as always. It's so poetic. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Thank you guys for for making that happen. That's awesome. Sorry, uh, Stephanie. Out. My my desk.